Welcome to another review of the InMotion V12. Now, if you haven't seen the first review, go and check it out. It'll be linked below in the description. That's the unboxing and range test video of this V12. This is the second video and it's a quick 250 kilometer update. What does that mean? It means that I've covered at least 250 kilometers on the wheel. It's something that we do here at Speedy Feet to ensure we have a really good overview of any vehicle that we're riding, driving, so we can give you an honest appraisal of it. Really, really important. We don't just unbox it, give it a test and say, yay, it's brilliant or it's rubbish. So we actually run it for a thousand kilometers. Those of you who've been following us for a number of years, that won't be new news to you. But for those at first time watchers, listeners, then this is what we do. So this is the second video. The next one will be the 650 kilometer review. So I've got a bit of a jump to go now. I'll stick some more miles on her. So far, how have I been getting on? Just going to interrupt you there to say, please like and comment on this video. It really does help with the channel growth. After all, this is all free to you. Uh, it comes at our expense testing all these wheels and all our time and money goes into this channel. So if you could just simply like it and comment, that would be awesome. And also share it far and wide. That would be brilliant. Right, now back to the commentary. Let's tackle the on-road situation first of all. It is a lovely cruising machine. Really, really nice. For a 16-inch wheel, it does feel far bigger in terms of the ride comfort and the confidence you can have in a ride. So going along, it sort of feels like it's an 18-inch wheel. It packs a punch and it sits on the road really nicely. There is an option within the app to change it from off-road to road, so commuting. And that's designed really just to change the sensitivity of the foot plates. So it rides differently. It's less crisp or less sharp, but not in a negative way. I've actually found that with commuting along with flowing traffic, it actually lends itself in commuting mode to better braking, more comfortable braking. Uh, it sort of leans back into the braking. You get your whole body leaning into it, making it for more of a safer stop. I get less wobble on harsh braking on the commuting mode. I find that to be preferable, to be honest, and I've been actually using it off-road as well. I found it a bit more relaxed, a bit more comfortable to ride, uh, less energetic in that in that way. I say not in a negative way. It's not lazy. Uh, it's just more comfortable to ride in the commuting mode. It's a lot sharper in the off-road mode. Now, that can help if you're doing steep climbs and things like that or sometimes loose terrain. It can help, but otherwise I've had it since I switched it over to commuting. I tried the first 150 kilometers in off-road mode, then I switched it just so I had a good understanding of what that mode was like and almost let out a sigh of relief when I rode on the road in commuting mode. So that's pretty sweet. Worth mentioning in between talking about road and off-road is the mudguard. Now the mudguard is a bit of a letdown if I am completely honest. So if you're riding in rainy weather, you're gonna find a lot of spray going up the back. So up your legs and it's even got up to my coat. So worth bearing that in mind, it could do with a bit being a bit wider, uh, out a bit more. So you might have to do some sort of DIY mod if you're riding a lot of rain. Or if you're like me, if I'm riding in the rain and if you are, it's very likely you're gonna be wearing overclothes of some description. So I've been wearing my motorcycle trousers the alpine stars the dry stars um, so i stay nice and warm and toasty and completely dry they're 100 waterproof and a waterproof jacket so it doesn't really affect it apart from the sort of the extra mud and stuff and junk on the jacket and trousers now if you've got somewhere to hang it up and you don't mind it dripping on the floor that's cool but if you pop around to your in-laws house for example or a friend's house they probably don't want you bringing in your muddy stuff in and dripping all over their floor it's a bit embarrassing so it's worth keeping in mind, um, just, I, I would do a little mod just to widen out and broaden that mud guard to try and make it cover off more spray. So obviously the faster you go, the more spray you get. And I find with this wheel cruising um, at a good reasonable speed, you do get a lot of overspray. It never reaches the front of the wheel, but nonetheless, there is a lot and you're gonna have to wear waterproof over trousers etc if you don't want to get absolutely covered it's nowhere near as bad as not having a mud guard so it does stop almost all the mud 
but some of the junk and road dirt does get up your back as well so definitely worth keeping in mind that crosses over to off-road now where as i say you will get mud spray a lot of it does go on the wheel itself on the back of the wheel now this can actually cover off the back lights so they're almost covered over so you kind of have to wipe that mud off if you're doing a lot of trail riding and it comes to the end of the day or if you're in winter like we are now and you head back out onto the road to go home i find that actually you need to be do a bit of a safety uh, check over when you come out of a trail and just wipe those lights down so you've got high visibility as you set off in dusky or dark environments so worth noting that you do get mud at the back of the machine as well in terms of the handling of the machine off-road it is spot on in terms of the torque that it produces the ride height which as we didn't mention in the first review is adjustable so we've left it factory set out the box well i have anyway um and so i've been absolutely loving that height it's nice and high up so it's high setting it's it's really nice to ride i've not knocked the foot plates on anything so far which is fairly unusual uh the only thing that lets it down is the tire now that's not the wheel itself of course the tire could do with being grippier now i could get around this to a degree by bringing the psi down i have adjusted the psi from the first video we did i brought it down to around about 32 to 35 psi and for my weight and for the terrain i'm on i found that a lot better I found it actually grips better now i could go down a little bit more but i don't want to open myself up to a higher risk of punctures so it's a bit of swings and roundabouts on exactly what you want to do so i've gone for that pressure i found it's actually had less impact on my back when i'm riding off road that little softer bounce of the tire is uh, welcomed put it that way so i've done a lot of trail riding on this off road has been fine as i say you've just got to watch it on the adverse cambers and things like that for the grippy tire that is lacking in terms of grip but it is all it is all um you can overcome it all basically it's not a major problem it's just something i'm pointing to i'm nitpicking so if you think oh i better not get that wheel because i can't off-road it the you're on the wrong line you've misunderstood so it's perfectly fine off-road tire would definitely improve that that tire is not far adrift from pretty much every wheel out there there's a lot of you on the forums, electricpeople.org and places like that, who have swapped out tyres, not on the V12, but on other unicycles uh, for a more grippy tyre. But of course, then that plays off once you go on road. And so this is a fairly happy medium, I would have said. It's definitely pointed more to road use. In terms of range of the V12, we did the range test in video one. Now, we had a few comments we always do about the fact that, oh, wow, you've got such small range. We can get much more range. I get much more range. You know, I'm doing 80 miles and you're only doing 40. That, you know, it's a common thing. It's not unusual. Uh, there seems to be almost um, a disdain for reporting true mileage. Uh, it is dependent on many factors, but we always head out on the, the most likely scenario where you're going to get the least possible. So it's a rounded experiment in terms of our range and so we can reproduce it over and over again but also you'll get more if you go slower or you weigh less or both so and or but just like any wheel if you pin this wheel flat out you can deplete the battery rapidly so it's pretty easy to do um i'm going to probably do another video where i show you the effects not having a go at the v12 at all but any wheel with a lithium-ion battery producing around about this power if you just go flat out everywhere you'll get tiny mileage in comparison to if you ride it sensibly just like with electric cars you know if you pin it on the motorway you can watch that percentage drop down by percent by percent by percent uh, whereas if you drive it sensibly you'll get a lot more miles out of it so it is variable by rider but the if you watch video one the range that we're getting there you're going to get more either the same or more if you just slow it down a bit and if you're riding in warmer weather so the range has been spot on the um what i found really is that i've been charging with the sherman five amp charger rather than the standard charger uh, if i want to stick some miles on it so we're sort of stuck between a rock and a hard place because we have to have to uh do more miles cram them in in a short space of time so we need to charge quicker as i said in video one the charge port there's only one charge port it'd be lovely to have two but i've kind of worked around that by using the sherman charger which you can get from speedyfeet.co.uk if you just type in five amp you'll get it that's been charging up a lot quicker 
Um, so I've been able to get on the road more, but I've found myself using that. I've used the other one a couple of times, so I'm doing around about three or four fast fast charges. And then plug it in the standard charge that comes with it, which is also an overrated charger anyway, or uprated compared to what we used to. So it's still running at good amperage, um, but this five amps are round about uh, twice as quick. So that's what I've been doing. Not necessary for most folk out there, but it is worth knowing that you can plug a 100 volt five amp charger into it and it's been working fine, charging up nice and quick. So I've found the range to be fine. The trolley handle is a nice addition. I rarely use the trolley handles. A lot of you guys will if you're commuting back and forward. So you'll use a trolley handle more than I, but I found it to be absolutely fine when I've messed about with it intentionally to test it. There's, I don't know what more you'd want in a trolley handle really. It folds down, doesn't slot into the machine. I quite like that because it's not, sort of doesn't do away with any waterproofing. So it remains on top. It's like an addition, it's bolted on. So there's no worries there with it going down into the machine, getting dirt on it and pushing in that dirt and water down into the machine. It's just sat on top, it's folded down. Pretty simple really. The front headlight unit is really nice touch. So you've got a high beam, low beam option on it. Uh, you've also got the option to have it come on automatically, which is an, isn't unusual for wheels. The low and high beam work really well. And on auto mode, you can actually switch. It, it switches between high and low, which is quite nice. Um, haven't really seen it dip with oncoming cars, so I don't know if it's supposed to. So I'll probably do a little bit more testing on that. Um, I found that it's plenty bright enough uh, on, on really on the max mode. It's spot on. It's got a broad light. It's got a light in front of you where the road is and further afield. So that works really, really well. Very, very bright. The auto mode, though, I have had some weird quirks with it. So out in the woods, obviously pitch black where I live is the Forest of Dean and it is in the middle of nowhere. So there's no street lights. And I've had it at low speeds, low speeds only. Uh, after a lot of testing it just switches off for a split second or one to two seconds and then comes back on i mean switch off completely so it seems to be from a roundabout and this is a bit rough but about 15 kilometers and below it switches off every now and again uh, it's sort of like a bit of a joke to see if it can kind of catch you out so definitely worth mentioning that i managed to capture it on video which is pretty sweet didn't know if i'll be able to but you can but it's only ever happened at low speeds such as that this machine does have speakers on it those speakers can be used to play music which is something i don't do the lights do dance when you put music on i'm not into that that's not sort of my my thing um but it can also connect uh, via the app obviously from your phone so you'll need a phone ideally to get the most out of this we will need a phone like all wheels except from this little billy bonus of the screen so the screen on the top of the wheel as you look down is really really useful and almost all not all but almost all the functionality is available from that screen with sim simple finger pressing now i've tested this in rain as well so rain droplets on it and me moving my finger around it doesn't seem to affect it at all obviously it makes some difference but it does operate fine in the rain i've had no water ingress it's been absolutely spot on and i've ridden in some downpours so that's been working really really well the other functionality it has is the ability to add a sound it sounds a little bit like a motorbike it's more spacey than that sort of sky fi type of spaceship type thing but it's a little bit like a motorbike now that responds to the level of input you put on the foot plates so if you really hard lean forward it's louder and more grunt to it now i've tried that i find that a bit annoying because i'm rural so i don't need to let anyone know i'm there i just whiz about floating around don't want to attract attention to myself but in terms of sort of guys and girls in the city if you're riding along there's a lot of people about a lot of pedestrian sort of commotion going on that might be really really useful because as you're dialing back it's quiet so you can just nod yourself forward slightly and it'll make a noise um, so you can almost use it like a warning alarm system so that's pretty good let people know you're there good safety feature i said a thumbs up for that one that's for sure um i've just found that to be for out and about in the rural area just a bit more of an annoying thing you know you don't want to make these things that's why i don't play music you don't want to make i mean a nice by design they're lovely and silent and floaty non-intrusive they don't annoy anyone there's sort of no excuse whereas if you blare music out it can just pee people off and it's a bit like that but i can see definitely see a use for it if it's a congested area 
could be really useful to let people know you're there um, so you don't jump on anyone saves having an alarm on your hand or something like that, or a bell it just saves that and so yeah it is good now in the first video i talked about it would definitely benefit from boost pads uh, we do those on speedyfeet.co.uk as well if you type in super boost you'll find them um definitely will but one thing i will say using that commuting mode i felt less of a need for them as always if you want to get the maximum out of a wheel then of course super boost pads will definitely help i find the foot plates to be nice and grippy wide i don't get much foot ache at all uh, i've been sticking quite a few miles on it so it's all good uh, the rear flap for the charge port you've got to make sure you push that back in properly otherwise that can pop open um, just from your own fault really if not fitting it down closed fully before you leave uh, with it wouldn't usually be an issue of course but with the amount of spray the overspray that goes up the back you do want that protected you don't want dirt and grime getting in there really it's not going to be the best um, outcome is it really so you just got to make sure that's closed but everything else has been spot on I've got not really a lot else to say there are some features within the app which I'll probably go over separately to run through all the feature set but you can adjust things like uh, the battery how when the battery is low to actually utilize more of that battery uh, with without being limited but you get a warning you can change the maximum speed output you also get a warning saying by the way if you do this it's going to be incredibly dangerous um, you get all those sorts of things so there are other feature sets in there auto say auto light you can turn on or off it doesn't have to be auto so I've got mine currently this evening out on manual I found it when it got dusky well, it just wasn't coming on, and it's quite dangerous. Everyone else had their side lights on in their cars, and I thought, right, I so I pulled over. Without having to get my phone out through the, the screen, I was able to just turn off the auto light and just put it on manual, which I did. And with that manual mode, you can choose between all different configuration of lights at the front. So I had just two of the bulbs on, not all four. So, yeah, there we go. I really hope this has been insightful. Uh, this is the intention to let you know the feedback that we've got on it obviously ridden a lot of wheels over a lot of years um, and this one has got it all going for it really i would have said it's nice and compact easy to just get along with and it packs a punch in terms of uh, top end speed you know it's it's not the fastest wheel out there but it's flipping fast i mean the maximum really is 70 kilometers an hour that's really really quick not some speed i've been doing uh, but i have been cruising at speeds around about 60 kilometers an hour so it's it's yeah and it feels stable there the only thing that i would say about that in commuting mode i get a little bit of rocking back and forth in at, at around about 55 to 60 kilometers an hour uh it's not the tire it, you know it feels like it is it's not me wobbling i mean I, I know about these machines it is literally traveling up through the machine it it wobbles back and forth by about a two or three mil rocking as you're riding along which is a bit odd uh at first i thought is this going to cut out but of course i've ridden it now another whatever it is 200 kilometers um with no issues but with it like that it's a bit unnerving to start with but i've found no negative consequence for it but it's just a bit strange in off-road mode it doesn't seem to do that um so yeah i'll monitor that a little bit more i've tried to film it but you can't really film it because it's such a small movement it's very difficult to film so but i have tried but hopefully you'll understand what i mean uh, let me know in the comments below if anybody else has got a report of that back and feel that happening so yeah well there you go uh oh was missing the rear rubber section on the v12 so the front is there which overhangs the light units like a little shroud a rubber shroud haven't got one on the back uh, i think in motion are going to send me one with our next order anyway that we have in so we've got a load of v12s coming in they are up for pre-order this is definitely a cracking wheel. Uh, we wouldn't sell it otherwise. Hence the reason we got the demo ones first and then we've got these lot to follow in. So we've got a shipment coming in. If you want to pre-order it, it's up there to pre-order. Grab wheels while you can. So thank you very much. Check out speedyfeet.co.uk. Also check out electricpeople.org. That is a forum that costs us a fair bit of money to run each month really. Uh, if you don't want to be on Facebook or other social media, it's a standalone website that's a sort of social-esque um, you don't need to you can use an email to log in um, and so you just log in and post stuff up there pictures questions so you can post pinned posts um, you can do polls you can do questions you can just do a just a blank straight status update um, and upload pictures and videos and things like that so go and check that out uh, please don't forget to like this video for sure and comment as well that really does help the channel so 
if you could do that, that would be excellent. I heard that, it definitely engaged, but it spun up still. That was a bit annoying. Call cool on camera. Be careful. Be careful. Yeah, I'll be careful. Yeah, I'll be very careful. 